Good morning, everybody. I'm finally going to take a second and talk about carnivore diet and wrap all of that up. So without further ado, I'm going to talk about my objectives in starting this diet again. The ideal form, what I did, um, how that all ran, my results, um, whether or not you should undertake this sort of diet, and then kind of just bring you up to speed on what I'm doing right now. So I initially undertook this diet in order to do a few things, address some chronic back, low back and upper back pain that I've been having, and to increase my testosterone and just overall feel like I'm living a more radical, healthy lifestyle that I want to lead. So ideally, the diet is uh, high quality grass fed meats, some fish, some poultry, eggs, salt, and no plants whatsoever. Uh, you can supplement, of course, with different things, uh, vitamins, minerals, whatever you think you need. Um, I uh, took things like magnesium to help me sleep, um, and then I also used some collagen as well. So let's dive in more into what I did. Um, so the first week and a half was pretty much, to a T, the ideal form. I had all kinds of red meat, steaks, ground beef, uh, mussels, clams, sardines, and by the end of the first week into the beginning of the second week, I was definitely in ketosis. You could smell the, the fruity uh, sense on my breath that, that happens when you're burning ketone bodies. But after that, I realized that I, I, it just wasn't working for me. So I wanted to continue with, with the blog, try and stick it out for the 30 days. So I added in honey, I added in liver, I added in a collagen supplement um, because I was also intermittent fasting in the morning during this time. Um, and so that's kind of the, the brass tacks of what I did. I would at the beginning go, to, it was sort of expensive as well. So, you know, I, was, I went from spending maybe $60 at the grocery store with lots of plants to like $150 at the grocery store buying mainly meat. So I went to Walmart and bought their 80-20 grass-fed meat. Not their Wagyu, but the grass-fed. And that ran me roughly about $100. So that was a pretty good um, starting point. Now, a few weeks in, I found a farmer on Facebook Marketplace who was selling ground beef, which it was fantastic, by the way. So if you want to support local farmers, I think it's a great idea. Not only are you getting super high quality ingredients, but you're also supporting them. So support local, check out Facebook Marketplace. That's a great um, way to get your foods. And that was much cheaper as well because I bought in bulk. So uh, it was all frozen. I bought it, like three weeks worth of ground beef and it turned out to be like uh, $80 a week rather than 100. So saving some money there as well as getting some good quality product. Now, talking into the results, I'm gonna post all of these numbers in the comments or the details section of the video. I have some charts and graphs, and if I can figure out how to put them on the video, I will. But let's start with baseline. So I have bod pod data, uh, which is body composition. Uh, fat free mass and fat mass pre, but I don't have it for post, unfortunately. Um, I was doing a research study with a friend and we, I didn't have a chance to go in for a second time. But let's start pre. 
Um, this is from my doctor. Uh, my blood pressure was 118 over 74, BMI was 24, I weighed in at 141 pounds, uh, heart rate was 76, and then we're going to take a look at blood markers. Those are on my phone. So moving into fat free mass, it was 85% and percent body fat was 15%. So my percent body fat was roughly 15. So pretty solid. Um, you know, it's not like the, the abs are popping out or anything or, you know, the, the veins are, are there, but you know, that's a really solid place to start. Um, I don't have my um, lipid panels on the printouts, but I will plug those into the comments section to the in the details of the YouTube video. So let's take a peek at the objective stuff for post. This was uh, literally the same week that I ended carnivore. Um, I pretty much got this data and was like, okay, I'm four days short. It's not doing what I want. So I'm going to just go ahead and stop. Um, so I, my, my blood pressure was 111 over 66 and my BMI was 24.9. So almost 25. I weighed in at 150 pounds so nine pounds heavier and my pulse was 65. So I'm guessing I was a little bit fasted based on the vitals that are just a little bit lower than where I was before. So all in all, I gained almost 10 pounds, but certainly some of it was fat. And of course we wanna just gain muscle. So take that for what it is. Unfortunately, I don't have the bod pod post data but we can assume that some was muscle, some was fat, because I was still training at this time. Now, in terms of the things that I wanted to track, i.e. My, my symptoms, and then my testosterone, um, and this, just how I was feeling, my testosterone actually dropped in half. And I think this is because the diet is so restrictive that you can only eat one thing, and you're also changing your fuel source for your body. So perhaps if I stuck it out for a little bit longer, things might have been different. Maybe my testosterone would steadily increase back up to baseline, but I wanted this to work after 30 days. And that was a good enough snapshot for me to say, this probably isn't the best thing for me to be doing. So testosterone wise, cut in half, did not improve my symptoms, didn't worsen them, but did not improve them in my back. And overall performance in the gym stayed the same. Now, there's some interesting things that kind of came about from this. Uh, I noticed like my sensation being heightened. And I'm not sure if that's because maybe my cortisol was a little higher. I was in more of a constant fight or flight type scenario, but I noticed that my smell, my sense of smell was heightened. I could smell uh, perfumes and deodorants and my own smell, how I smell also was like, easier to smell if that makes sense i could also tell like if i had something that my body didn't like if i had like maybe some some red meat that wasn't as cooked that my odor would change the next day like under my armpit it would be more foul so that's just an interesting thing that i noticed in this state of eating only red meat uh, my stools 
were more irregular than they usually are, like every three days rather than every one day. Um, and I just like to be regular because I'm a bit type A. So uh, that was a little bit unnerving for me. It, it was fine, but it was a little bit unnerving. Um, energy levels, uh, ultimately, I didn't find that there was like a peak and valley type sensation, but whatever I woke up in the morning feeling like just was steady throughout the day. So that's kind of a good thing if you are a person who this diet really fits with and you're high energy and you just sustain it because there's no boom and bust from the carbs jumping into your system. Uh, sleep maintained about the same. Um, I have some trouble with sleep, so I'm doing a lot of different things. Uh, I mentioned the magnesium glycinate earlier. Um, that helps you calm down at night and wind down. Um, so that didn't really help. Uh, mental clarity, I mean, I felt taxed. Uh, you know, like is as a restrictive diet, it felt like that was my state. It felt like you know, there, there was not a, a sharpness that some people seem to claim uh, more so with this diet than others. And just in general, performance in the gym uh, stayed about the same. Didn't improve, didn't decrease, but, um, you know, when we're, when we're making optimization tweaks, we want things to improve. So key takeaways here, should you do the diet? My advice for you is if you've had some experience with dieting, experience with fasting, because this is such a res restrictive diet, it's going to be very difficult for you if you don't have that experience. So undertake this with a grain of salt if you are new to dieting. Ultimately, when you make any diet tweaks, you can read all the research you want. You can read all the information. You just have to try it and see if you feel better. Do like I did. Be a little scientific. Track some things. See if they improve for what you want. And if not, then move on. And I think that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm kind of integrating plants back into the equation. And I've got more of a nuanced view of what diet looks like. Um, right now, I would consider what I'm doing animal-based. I'm eating a lot more meat than probably someone uh, who's a, a dietitian would recommend someone to do, but I'm doing so because I'm trying to gain lean mass. And I'm also eating vegetables, fruits, fasting, and doing all of these other things in order to mitigate my cardiovascular risk factors, but also improve the other things that I'm interested in, like physique, performance, and sleep. So that is what I'm doing at this time, animal-based, uh, some plants, some grains, some grains. I uh, do not eat gluten. Uh, I've found that I just feel a lot worse when I do that. So that is kind of what I'm doing currently. And uh, that is the, the conclusion of today's video. Just wanted to give you all a, a wrap up on what carnivore diet is for me and give you some pointers maybe on, on some things to do if you wanted to try this for yourself. Uh, thank you all for coming today, sharing some time with me. I really appreciate the support of the channel. Leave a comment if you have any questions or, or concerns. Uh, leave a like if you liked the video. And uh, remember to stay moving and much love, fam. Have a great day.